There is a site selection election here that will take that is taking place today and will take place tomorrow where we will vote on the site of the 2024 WesterCon. There are no bids on the ballot because nobody bid filed before the April 15th deadline. However, we have received a bid from a bid from Salt Lake City, Utah, and they are bidding as a write-in bid. And so I'd like to introduce Charles Gower. Uh, about a month ago, I had this dream, very short dream, where a bunch of fans were all in the same room deciding to go to a convention. And I kind of looked around and like I was the guy standing and everybody else was sitting down. I thought, oh, maybe I'll turn on the computer in the morning and see who's bidding for WesterCon. And there were two openings. And so I started calling my friends and said, well, <laughs> Maybe I should put a bid in for WesterCon and start around up because I've been in fandom for about 40 years. And um, I didn't know which year, and then I found out that Anaheim had put in for 2023. And I thought, well, I can do a bid for 2024. So I round some things, uh, checked out the airport Hilton. I have my old nose from 1998, 99, <laughs> where we did a conduit. It's a smaller hotel than the Hilton that we used downtown for WesterCon, smaller than the Layton facility that was co-joined with NASVIC. So I picked a hotel that's about 500 people um, in size, because I thought we're not gonna get all the old conduit people. Um, not everybody can uh, make it to Salt Lake City. And I want it to be affordable. It's small, it's about eight miles out of Salt Lake City. It's about three miles from the airport. It's via the free complimentary shuttle you can get from the airport Hilton, which is now Doubletree Hilton, to the airport. Um, it's about a $17 lift Uber ride to downtown Salt Lake City. So you can't walk to straight Salt Lake City unless you take <laughs> an eight mile walk. But it is close to the airport, and there's about 10 eating establishments. The airport, is, the Hilton itself, restaurant, <laughs> the hotel, has its own uh, restaurant and bar, and there's a surrounding of about a half a dozen other hotels around there. So our hotel would have about 277 rooms, which is way too many and surrounding hotels have lots more rooms. We won't run out of any rooms of uh, a normal nature. We may run out of suites, but I think we can set it up just fine for the suite availability. Uh, it's mostly ground level, and the west side faces out to a man-made pond, very scenic. So it's not going to feel like downtown Salt Lake. It's going to feel like it's sort of out, well, out kind of in an industrial park, but the west side doesn't look industrial at all. It looks like a, uh, a pond. And Salt Lake City, most of you are aware of Salt Lake City, and the ComCom, I've managed to get a treasure that's worked with Utah Pride in vendor communications. Um, that was a festival that we had a few weeks ago. It's been running for about 10 years. And Pamela Oberg from Conduits talked to me, and we have to probably file a new corporation paper. I just filed, sent in for a L3C low profit corporation. But we're talking with Black Leaders and everything for the LLC, and uh, Massachusetts might be able to sponsor us. So we're setting that up. We only have a few weeks to put this together. And come visit our table, come visit our party. I know there's other things I could say, but you know, come talk to us. Thank you. Fan, fan tables are up in this area, and it may not have been quite noticed, but the area up in the upper level over on this side is where our parties are at. There are no parties in the hotels. We have Parties located in the, fan, in the fan zone up here, and that's on the map, which I hope some of you have looked at. It's in your program book. Charles, 
Charles, if, if, I want to find out here. If there are, are there any questions that people have? Because we have about, we give a 15 minute slot here. Before I let him go, is there anyone wishes to ask some questions of this bid? I don't hear any. I don't see any hands. Okay. Do you, you have one? Okay. Lisa, do you suppose you could take the floor microphone? Don't jump off that stage. You have to turn it on. Will this be a joint in-person and virtual con? How much will it be virtual? I do not yet know how much virtual we will have at this point. I've talked to FireCon, who has switched basically from an in-person to a, uh, an online convention. And anybody here who's interested in writing might want to check out FireCon in Salt Lake City because they have a nice virtual programming. So almost anybody here could attend via online. And I might mention also that like the universe and everything uh, still occurs in Utah County, it's very writer friendly. So two events that are worth checking in Utah, yes? How easy is it to get... Wait for the microphone. Scott? Oh, yeah. ah. Okay, I don't try. How easy would it be to get to downtown Salt Lake City? Uh, you could get an Uber or Lyft for about $17. You can do a transfer on the bus between the shovel that goes to the airport and the mass transit that goes from the airport to downtown Salt Lake City. It is somewhat inconvenient, but it can be done using that transfer system. Any other questions? Kevin, yeah, this one's for you. What happens if Utah does not win? Well, the question was, should, uh, first of all, there's a lot of technicalities. The actual deadline for filing a bid is the end of site selection voting, which is 7 o'clock tomorrow night at the site selection table out in the lobby. Not a theoretical consideration, as I have administered a site selection election myself, where one of the bids filed with one second to spare. <laughs> Should none of the above or no eligible bid win, the selection of the convention site is put to the Westercon business meeting, which will be right here on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And there are various permutations of rules depending on how the vote actually goes that I will discuss there as chair of the business meeting should it happen. But uh, the general rule is that if the site selection election does not return a bid as a winner, a, a valid bid, I should say, filed valid bid, then the business meeting decides, which requires a three-fourths vote, or if they do not decide, either by explicitly saying they do not decide by a majority vote, or by adjourning without making a decision, then the selection falls to the board of directors of the Los Angeles Science Fantasy Society because LOSFUS owns the service mark. In practice, LOSFUS tries to stay out of the affairs of Western Con. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Are there any more questions about, okay, another question in the back. Stay up here. I'm not chasing you off yet. Correct me if I'm wrong, but now the site selection, we're going to have the chance to vote for Utah? All right, well, let's go into mechanics. Not everybody here, I know it may be hard to believe knowing the number of faces I've seen, the people I see here, but not everybody here has participated in the site selection election. In the lobby, out here, there's a table. We'll call it, that's a site selection table. There's a sign on it that says site selection. There's a ballots on the table. Now, it costs $20 to vote. That $20 makes you a supporting member of whichever convention bid wins. There are, no there are no bids that qualify to have their names on the ballot, but there are blanks for write-ins. There is a, a, blank, a space for none of the above. There's a space for no preference, which says, I don't care. And, and by the way, voting no preference is the same as, as leaving the ballot blank. It has no effect on the total number of votes cast. 
but it gets you in on the election. Um, it is a preferential ballot where you number your choices, like the Hugo Awards, where your first choice put a one, your next choice a two, and so on, but may not be that much of a factor in this case. Should you wish to vote for any write-in bid, there is only one that we know of right now, but there's still time. Uh, you write the name of that bid in the write-in space, and you mark in the preference area how you want to vote for it. And then after 7 o'clock tomorrow night, the administrator counts the ballots and then reports the results to the business meeting here at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Does that explain the process? Are there any, is there anybody who has further questions about the process? Okay, get the microphone. Do we need to know the committee name or just put the city in? Um, in the case of the, for that bid, their, their, uh, this, their bid, if you're, talking about the, if you're talking about Charles's bid, they are styled as Utah in uh, 2024. Anything that is reasonably identifiable as meaning that is it. But to make it easier on the counting, you should, if you plan to write them in, you should write them in as Utah in 2024. Are there any other, are there, okay. Actually, before I go on, are there any more questions of the bid? Okay, this is a question about the bid. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, um, you said that you were kind of aiming for a smaller hotel, about 500 people, and I was just wondering, Obviously, this year was very small. The last Western Con I attended was the one in Portland that was huge. So I'm kind of wondering um, how you decided how big you thought you would be. Yes, since uh, the last few Western Cons, uh, a big convention that's often called Fan X, previously called Salt Lake City Comic Con, has kind of absorbed some of the fan interest in the Salt Lake City area. So I'm trying to allow for fan interest of a younger group to, you know, I sat at the Fan X table trying to promote Western Cons and people just walked by and I feel like we're not the large demographic group that Fan X seems to cater to. So I picked 500 because it's been a historical pattern in Salt Lake City to get roughly that many attendees reasonably, uh, but we never really hit a thousand as a general rule in the last 30 years. Are there any other questions of, to, for the bid? It's sort of related to the bid system. We have a bid for, for right in for 2024. What about 2023? This is a process question. Last year, at last year's WesterCon, no site was selected. Okay. Uh, the business meeting, therefore, had the right to pick any site they wanted of any sort. And it's not really a site when it gets to that point. The business meeting picks a committee. All right. The Sorry, I'm getting distracted by this. Uh, <laughs> the WesterCon business meeting, having been given the choice of how to select a site, selected a committee consisting of Kevin Stanley and Lisa Hayes to run WesterCon 75. With the understanding that we were going to probably find somebody else to actually run it. This is not unprecedented. In 2011, the, the, the WesterCon election cho uh, chose had no result, and the business meeting chose a committee of Kevin Rush and Andy Trimley to go find to go hold a WesterCon with no specified site because truthfully nobody was going to hold a WesterCon at Granzella's restaurant in, in uh, on Interstate Five. It is also not unprecedented for a committee to receive the right to hold a WesterCon and then to turn that right over to other conventions. The last Denver WesterCon was won by one group, which subsequently folded and transferred the right to hold that WesterCon to a different committee. 
the committee of Lisa and I sought other groups to hold it without a terrible amount of success until fairly late in the game when, a, when we received a credible bid from the group in Anaheim that we were going to introduce here in a minute. And uh, we, as a committee, decided to transfer the flag that was handed to us to the Anaheim committee. This was not a bid that has to be voted on by the business meeting or by the members. The members of Westercon, through the business meeting, had already chosen what would, what would, how Westercon 75 was to be organized, and we gave it to another group. This is all by both legal within the rules of Westercon and multiple precedents. Personally, I'm glad we didn't have to go any further than it. So, let's move on to talking about the Westercon 75 committee and we'll ask Arlene Busby to come to the microphone here. I, well, you're going to take that microphone for questions, so I'm going to let her use this one to talk. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, as Kevin mentioned, we came in last second, crazy as we were. Uh, my partner, Michelle, and I decided to take it on. And uh, we picked Anaheim, so we hope you all like that location. I see heads waving. Its uh, theme is fantasy. We haven't worked out all the details or named it exactly yet, but we know it's in Anaheim June 30th through July, I'm sorry, I'm out of breath, July 3rd. Um, if you want to support us, we have a table right there. We can take cards uh, if you want your full membership. Again, the same thing. So I uh, hope you'll all join us. We have a lot of really cool things planned, including uh, a ball and uh, a gaming tournament and so forth. So we hope you'll come and support us and enjoy yourself at it and enjoy this one here today. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I want to thank the committees that are stepping up so that Kevin and Lisa don't have to run three Western Cups in a row. <laughs> are there any other questions? Uh, membership rates, including conversion rates, if you voted in site selection last year? Um, 25 for supporting. 50 for membership for the weekend. So it goes up at door, of course, as you all know. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. And yes, Lisa and I are incredibly grateful. Thank you very much. I would like to think that at this point we have sort of, we, all of us, the members and all the bids involved, Assuming we have a selection that returns a result in the election going on now, we may have steered uh, Westercon off of a sandbar on which it has been stuck for several years. <laughs> we'll see where it goes after that. Before we quit for uh, here, uh, hospitality has some announcements. Well, first, personally, I want to thank all of you for coming to Tonopah. Thank you so much. I hope it wasn't as crazy an idea as I thought. Now, I hope you all enjoy what we have here in hospitality. There are items. I hope to put a menu out later. We have juices, orange, lemonade, apple in the refrigerator. So ask one of us. We'll bring it to you. We have ice cream available, which I bring around now and then. And if there's anything else we can do to help you, we'll try. But flea mignon or a pheasant under glass is just a little bit much. But there are some lovely restaurants here in Tonopah, so avail yourself. Thank you so much. Sort of forgot after I, after we called the convention to order. There we go. Just watch. Yes, I got a gavel, and I know how to use it. And that ends our opening ceremony and bid presentations. The next item that will happen on this stage, as I recall, is that is Match Game, correct? Yes. Match Game SF will be here on Saturday.
Saturday night from 7 to 9, and we'll, uh, we'll hope to see you there. The rest of the time, this is hospitality and parties and fan tables and the bar. And thank you very much, and have a great time. Oh, the dealer room. And the dealer's room. And do, do go spend money in the dealer's room. I was looking at just this room, not the blackboard room. She's right. Have a good time. Thank you, everybody.